Hi, we are looking today at two knives that sort of came out at about the same time as each other, but um, yeah, have some slight differences in terms of materials, price, style, and all that sort of stuff, but they both sold as bushcraft knives. So you've got the Benchmade 200 Puko bushcraft knife, you've got the Lion Steel B40 bushcraft knife. I did a bit of a silly video a little while back about bushcraft knives in general. Watch that video and you kind of get an idea of how I feel about this whole thing. These are both just, in my mind, just good belt knives to have in jobs that you're gonna need to cut things. The whole bushcraft thing for me is a bit more of an internet thing, um, something that we can all sort of enjoy as a thought experiment a little bit more than perhaps as much as we're all pretending we are doing those sorts of tasks. But I do enjoy a good belt knife when I'm working around my yard or when I'm going for a walk or something like that, except my uses for it aren't ever nearly as cool as the things we like to sort of portray in our videos. Anyway, watch that video and let's get on with the talking about these two blades. Benchmade 200 Puko, you've got a sabre ground piece of 3V steel at a somewhat lower Rockwell, apparently it's about at 56 or 57. It, uh, in the edge retention test, it cut 180 times, I believe, through the rope uh, before it no longer sliced the held sheet of paper on a 17 degree mirror polished edge that I put on it myself. Um, and then it's got a overmolded rubberized polymer style handle. It is a, a, a full tang, but the tang is slightly covered by a thin layer of rubber. The tang goes all the way through to the lanyard hole here though. So for all intents and purposes, it is a pretty full tang. Um, it's got a sort of oval shaped handle and it's got a blade that's just on the four inches, kind of like that sweet spot of these little camp bushcraft knives that they often like to sell. So it retails for about $219, $220 in Australia uh, from Knife Shop AU. Um, I'm sure in America there's some more competitively priced options than we get over here, but that's what I got it from um, that shop at that price. So there you go. Uh, the Lion Steel B40 has a, a Sleipner steel blade. Sleipner is a variant of D2. I believe this is heat treated to about 60. Uh, in my rope cutting test, it cut about 300 times on the rope, I believe. Um, you can see that test in a previous video, which I'll perhaps link at the end or put, a, put in the comments. Um, and this is also a saber grind. It's got a crown spine. It's got a four inch blade, slightly over four inch blade. It's got a stabilized wood handle. We can get a few different handle options and colors. And it's got a, a lanyard at the end. It comes with a leather sheath. This is a um, slightly squarer handle, slightly more boxy overall, but still very much sold for the same purpose of being a bushcraft whittling style knife. These knives, I would say, are all kind of taking off a bit since the success of the Mora Garberg knife, which is again, a four inch style, sort of mostly full tang knife with a you know nice oval style handle. This is a really successful knife and it's got the juices flowing from a few other companies and that's where you end up with these two. So I'm just gonna talk about how I like the handles, the comfort, the steel, the blades, all that sort of stuff, make an eventual recommendation between the two of them at the end, and then we'll talk about some other competitive-ish options. So let's get into it.
So the sheaths on both are pretty decent quality leather. I feel like the Lion Steels is a little bit nicer. Um, this says handmade in Italy on it. Um, don't know about the Benchmade sheath. It's probably American made. Uh, the leather's a bit kind of rougher and you know how the leather feels drier and a bit lighter um, on the Benchmade sheath. Um, I wouldn't say it's poor quality. It's just a very basic taco style sheath. I do like the dangler option. I prefer to carry a, a dangler style sheath because it doesn't poke me in the side as much or as you can sort of lean over, especially, I've actually lost a little bit of weight, but usually, see even this little squish squish here, um, usually prone to being poked with um, knife handles when I leave over, although that being said, crikey. Oh yeah, if I pull my pants up a little bit more, you do get a bit of rub when you lean and move down for things. And it sounds silly, but after a whole day, it sometimes can give you just a little bit of a chafe just here on your um, uh, pleasure point. <laughs> So let's talk about these steel. So, slept in the steel is, as far as my testing goes, gonna hold an edge for a, a good bit longer than this 3V steel. That's not a universal rule though. Usually 3V steel has the edge holding performance of about like an S30V style steel, um, but also a good amount of toughness. That's when it's heat treated much harder. Uh, so up to maybe 59 or 60 or something, and it probably would be neck and neck or even perhaps Slightly better than this stuff, depending on a few other things, of course. But this is quite a lower uh, heat treatment, so it's a, apparently at about 56. Um, therefore, the edge retention isn't going to be as high. Often a, a harder steel holds an edge against fibrous materials for a fair bit longer, and you could even perhaps extend that to all materials for a little bit longer, just depending. So much, you know, depending. Um, so in terms of your ad average edge retention for stuff that you're going to be coming across in basic terms as you know your camping bushcraft sort of materials which is wood with the grain um you know food rope stuff like that then this is going to hold an edge for a bit longer however trying to play devil's advocate a little bit for benchmates um behalf let's have a look at the difference between these two knives when you are doing something that is i guess still a real life task but perhaps a bit of a a, a poorly chosen task for a knife so let's open a coconut with these two blades. So you see the Benchmade takes a few strikes from the yeah, right against that surface of the coconut, which is a very hard thing to put a, an edge against, especially a 17 degree edge. And it still slices a piece of paper, no worries. So these are both the same edge, remember that? They're both at 17 degrees mirror polished. Let's see what the line still does. So instant rolling from the Lion Steel's uh, edge. Basically the three hits and it's not particularly a usable edge anymore. It's not that salvageable. It's, you know, I can fix it, no worries. But if I was out at camp and decided to be stupid and open a coconut with my knife, then you might be in a bit of a, a pickle in terms of having to get like a proper sharpener rather than just re-stropping it um, to get a workable edge back on the knife. Not saying that this is you know, justifying the softer Benchmade steel, but I'm just trying to show you a difference between, I guess, very soft, or very tough, softer steel, and, you know, standardly, you know, hardened, more average cutlery steel in terms of the slap in here. So just a bit of a, a talking point. Now, and as such, I'll go ahead and continue opening the coconut with the Benchmade and see how that goes. <laughs>
Okay, I don't know if this gives the bench bed knife any extra cred, but something's happened. So I just did my coconut crack on my flat workbench. This is all level. Guess the old girl was gonna die at some point and today was that day. I'm gonna see how each of them strikes a fire still using the spine. This is, seems to be a somewhat important thing for lots of bushcrafty folks. actually has a filed off rather small but still present piece of steel right here on the back of the blade or on the back of the handle that you can strike a fire steel with. <laughs> Comparatively, the 200 is, I guess, weaker than the B40 if you're after knife only fire steel ignition. I mean, I usually carry a two piece fire steel, or let's be honest, a lighter or some matches or something that's not, um, you know, bushcraft etiquette. But if you're after something that's just going to ignite it, having just a knife and a steel, then of these two knives, the B40 has the more um, capable mechanism, even though it is just a small part at the end. Perhaps not what you're used to, but it's what you get. With this one, all the surfaces are slightly too rounded over to get any more than just some very minor sparking, which is probably not going to be enough to start a fire unless you're using petrol as your main tinder source. Good news for people who don't want either of these knives is there's loads of blades in this rough size, purpose, even price. Uh, and I'll go through a couple of them now. So this is the Mora Garberg. The Mora Garberg is a Scandinavian ground knife. So if you look at the saber of the uh, lion steel, this has a grind that's obviously much shorter than it, but it goes towards only a tiny micro bubble. You can see the little silver line there. It just performs differently. I wouldn't say better or worse, just differently, uh, depending on the task. It's not gonna cut fruit as well, but it's gonna really shave wood and give you a lot of good control over wood. And it's also a fairly robust grind, given that it has a micro bevel for splitting wood and doing things like that. Uh, the Mora has a much sharper spine, and we all know that sharp spines get the gills in terms of bushcraft. And um, it's also a full tang, very sort of similar construction wise to probably the uh, Benchmade Puko really, uh, in terms of just an over molded handle and um, general kind of fairly traditional Scandinavian style design and construction. The Condor Pterosaur is about half the price of the Mora Garberg. The Mora Garberg is actually the same uh, as the, or well, the black version is anyway, is about the same price as the Benchmade Bushcrafter in Australia anyway. Uh, the Pterosaur is made of 
Very similar materials to the Gabberg, so it's 1095 steel, sort of like a plastic overmolded handle with a full tang protrusion, and this sells for about half the price. Uh, they're not as readily available in Australia, but in America, these are about uh, $60 or so. So a little bit less, probably the cheapest of all these knives that I'll suggest as alternatives. Again, Scandi Grind's gonna perform a little bit different, but it's still a great little alternative. Do all your good wood carving stuff. It's a totally cool belt knife. Falconer of an F1 Pro. So this is a slightly fancier knife. This is about in the 300-ish dollar region in Australia, maybe even a little bit more than that. The laminated COS steel. It's going to perform about as well as the Slepness steel in terms of edge retention, um, depending on you know a few variants. This is obviously a, a convex grind, so the grind is going to perform again a little bit differently uh, against you know certain things. But I find that Falconer's convex grinds are really nicely done generally and still very thin and very acute at cutting so very nice indeed again it's got that full tank sort of enclosed entirely by the handle the only one of these that is slab handled is in fact the the line still so if that really matters to you then this might still be your option but i think out of all of these production ones this is probably my favorite it's um a little bit thicker, a little bit more robust, but still performs the way that I like it to perform. So that's probably my choice out of all the production blades. However, I really would recommend having a look at your small batch fixed blade custom makers. Uh, this is Alex Dron. Uh, this is he's an Instagrammer. He's only got a few, you know, a few hundred subscribers, I think, or followers on Instagram. And these knives are about, you know, 150 US dollars for a completely handmade knife uh, in Nitro V steel. Really, really well ground and heat treated. This is one of my better performing knives. Uh, I've been, you know, completely wrapped with this one. It's thicker. It's more. It's a very durable knife, um, but it's yeah, ground really, really well down to a very fine edge too. So the best of both worlds there for sure. Comes with a great leather sheath. This was um, sort of something that really got me thinking that maybe these production fixed blades uh, aren't as, you know, aren't as much of a sure thing as you would perhaps think, given that this market is so strong and competitive at the moment for getting a really a good deal for, um, uh, you know, a relatively small amount of money, especially when compared to the uh, folding knife sort of custom world. So I would just suggest ask around a bit, see who's making good fixed blade knives, um, see who's had good reports, good feedbacks, maybe hit the forums or the community and see what everyone else has been buying because Alex Drone, I'd never heard of him until uh, my buddy Chris got me onto him and I would certainly buy these until the cows came home. They're really, really good blades. And again, cheaper often than your production ones. So something to think about too. But if we are thinking about only these two knives for this price point, which is about the 220-ish Australian dollar price point, um, I would probably go with the line still, even still. Um, I know it's got a crown spine. Uh, I know that the steel was a bit more brittle under stress than this 3V was, but for my purposes, I'm not really gonna particularly stress the knife. I just like the edge to last a good long time. It's to be good in the hand and good at sort of cutting, carving and whittling. And this one does that really, really well. The Benchmade is an absolutely fine knife. And a lot of people have these and absolutely love them. And some people really don't mind that the steel is a little bit softer. In fact, they may appreciate that bit of robustness when they, they put their 17 degree edge against the coconut. They like that coconut to crack and not the blade steel to fail. So yeah, there's just so much choice, so much variety in this market at the moment. And um, either of these I think would make you happy, but this one here is one that I would choose if I was doing it all again and just buying one for myself. So that's what I've got for you today, fellas. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.